This is a recording of A Summer's Reading by Bernard Malamud, Part 1. George Stoyanovich was a neighborhood boy who had quit high school on an impulse when he was 16, run out of patience, and though he was ashamed every time he went looking for a job, when people asked him if he had finished and he had to say no, he never went back to school. This summer was a hard time for jobs and he had none. Having so much time on his hands, George thought of going to summer school, but the kids in his classes would be too young. He also considered registering in a night high school, only he didn't like the idea of the teachers always telling him what to do. He felt they had not respected him. The result was he stayed off the streets and in his room most of the day. He was close to twenty and had needs with the neighborhood girls, but no money to spend, and he couldn't get more than an occasional few cents because his father was poor, and his sister Sophie, who resembled George, a tall bony girl of twenty-three, earned very little, and what she had she kept for herself. Their mother was dead, and Sophie had to take care of the house. Very early in the morning, George's father got up to go to work in a fish market. Sophie left at about eight for her long ride in the subway to a cafeteria in the Bronx. George had his coffee by himself, then hung around the, in the house. When the house, a five-room railroad flat above a butcher store, got on his nerves, he cleaned it up, mopped the floors with a wet mop, and put things away. But most of the time, he sat in his room. In the afternoons, he listened to the ball game. Otherwise, he had a couple of old copies of the World Almanac he had bought long ago, and he liked to read in them, and also the magazines and newspapers that Sophie brought home, that had been left on the tables in the cafeteria. They were mostly picture magazines about movie stars and sports figures, also usually the news and mirror. Sophie herself read whatever fell into her hands, although she sometimes read good books. She once asked George what he did in his room all day, and he said he read a lot too. Of what, besides what I bring home, do you ever read any worthwhile books? Some, George answered, although he really didn't. He had tried to read a book or two that Sophie had in the house, but found he was in no mood for them. Lately, he couldn't stand made-up stories. They got on his nerves. He wished he had some hobby to do. As a kid, he was good in carpentry, but where could he work at it? Sometimes, during the day, he went for walks, but mostly, he did his walking after the hot sun had gone down and it was cooler in the streets. In the evening, after supper, George left the house and wandered in the neighborhood. During the sultry days, some of the storekeepers and their wives sat in chairs on the thick, broken sidewalks in front of their shops, fanning themselves, and George walked past them and the guys hanging out on the candy store corner. A couple of them he had known his whole life, but nobody recognized each other. He had no place special to go, but generally, saving it till last, he left the neighborhood and walked for blocks till he came to a darkly lit little park with benches and trees and an iron railing, giving it a feeling of privacy. He sat on a bench here, watching the leafy trees and the flowers blooming on the inside of of the railing, thinking of a better life for himself. He thought of the jobs he had had since he had quit school. Delivery boy, stock clerk, runner, lately working in a factory. And he was dissatisfied with all of them. He felt he would someday like to have a good job and live in a private house with a porch, on a street with trees. He wanted to have some dough in his pocket to buy things with, and a girl to go with so as not to be lonely, especially on Saturday nights. 
He wanted people to like and respect him. He thought about these things often, but mostly when he was alone at night. Around midnight, he got up and drifted back to his hot and stony neighborhood. Okay, that was the end of part one. Part two is up next.